One of the things that has fueled the confusion over this whole issue is the confusing language that NZTA and the government have used. Spin is what they think they call it. Here's some basics. Our Western Link Road is a two to four laned local road along the designated Western Link Corridor that takes local traffic off State Highway 1. Because State Highway 1 is relieved of most local traffic, it can be progressively upgraded and we can sort out the congestion points at Ōtaki, Waikanae and Paraparaungu. The Expressway, or Sand Hills Expressway, or the Sand Hills Motorway on the other hand, is a proposed rerouting of State Highway 1, which uses the Western Link Corridor. Even though it is referred to as the Expressway, it would be more aptly named the Kapiti Autobahn. It's a full-blown, split-grade, 100 km per hour motorway. There would be 9 metre high, 100 metre wide interchanges at Kapiti Road and Timuana Road near Waikano Beach. Although some have called it the Sandhills Motorway, it would completely obliterate any Sandhills in its path. Some supporters refer to it as the Western Link Expressway in the media, and this has fueled the confusion further. An NZTA commissioned phone survey conducted in late 2009 simply referred to it as the Western Link Road. That's what people thought they were agreeing to. Is it any wonder we're feeling cheated? We made our way along the Western Link Corridor from Kapiti Road to Maisengarb Road. Much of it was over large dunes. Who cares about the poor people that will live down there? And who cares that our new fire station was built in Tiroto Drive for speedy access to the Western Link Connecting Road? No more easy access there, with traffic including fire engines consigned to getting on and off the interchanges designated by the motorway. Before this autobahn idea was sprung on Kapiti, the community had a 21st century solution to our roading issues. The Western Link Road was designed to connect the communities along the coast. It would have enabled many residents to pass from one to the other on a local road without having to mix with higher speed state highway traffic. In an area famous for its retirement communities, that's a huge bonus. It was designed to reduce the occasional congestion on the state highway by segregating local from through traffic which is something Stephen Joyce claimed was the aim of the expressway as well. We've heard a lot from the government that this road is vital for productivity because it will allow trucks to pass through the district four and a half minutes faster. The government doesn't seem to consider the negative impact on local productivity that dealing with the through traffic causes. The current plans for the expressway mix local and through traffic and it's silly to think that locals won't use it to get across the river. Dualist um, communities all the way through Kapiti. So there's big traffic east-west flows. Now those east-west flows are going to be hugely interrupted by putting an expressway down the middle of it. They were going to be interrupted anyway with the, with the western link road, mm. but most of the mitigation that was required was taken care of in the plan. The two main things motivating local opposition and anger are, one, the increasing awareness of how this autobahn would change the iconic Kapiti district, and two, the burden this Think Big project will have on future taxpayers. It's a big deal. Don't forget the increasing awareness of double dealing and manipulation by our current government. This is not fringe. The, the, the opposition to this is not fringe, it's mainstream. It's actually mainstream opposition. And I think what's starting to happen, some of the political people are starting to wake up to that. They're going, oh my God, the vast majority of the people of Kapiti don't want this thing. They really don't want it. And as they find out more and more about it and what it's going to mean, that opposition is going to be more and more vocal. I think we will see opposition on an unprecedented scale in Kapiti. People are going to get excited and pumped about this and people are going to say, this is our Kapiti and we're going to protect it. We have to protect Kapiti against this thing. And more and more people are coming to that view. And as the road itself is exposed for what it is, this huge behemoth of an expressway, that, op that opposition is just going to get increasingly vociferous. People's views are going to get stronger and stronger. Nathan Guy had the audacity to not even include it in that cockamamie survey of his, which was completely screwed to you know, the government's argument. And you know they never put the they never put the council's fourth alternative on the table. They didn't consider it at all. They had no intention. So yeah, now now the council's put in the unenviable position of having to join the coalition just to make sure they're inside the tent and they've got some say on what goes on. And I think they. I think, if I were, you know, I'd like to see a few more councillors show some guts and stand up against this thing. The roads of national significance, runs, and it's like a mantra that they chant, so it's an idea in the head, 
but what does it actually mean if they do it? And what are they trying to solve when they do it? And that's finally what you have to go back to, is what are they trying to solve? Just the fact that when I went up to Southwoods Museum and um, I talked to the guys, they just didn't really have any answers for you. It just kind of left you really frustrated. No answers really, no answers to anything. And I think it would be better to, to talk for another 50 years because then, because then our community wouldn't be destroyed. <laughs> so I think that actually continuing the discussion would be a good thing. And I think that's why the Minister actually in the end has stepped in. Because they're saying, well, that's not good enough. We want to increase road transport basically at the cost of um, rail transport. I imagine that they're wondering what they're going to do with Kiwi Rail and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. you know. As far as I'm concerned, there was no consultation in this process. I don't know much about it, but I, I just feel it happened very quickly, which was a little odd, I thought, at the time. Mm -hmm. The approval came through very quickly. So I guess behind the theme, scene, something has to have happened. Kiwis are slow to anger, but they feel things deeply. And, and once they realise an issue is wrong, they, they will stand against it. You know, witness the nuclear issue, um, recently the anti-mining anti thing. And um, I think that this goes against the grain of what we are really about as New Zealanders. It is so much against the things that our core we believe. And as people w awake to that and see what is at stake, more and more of those people will, will come out and oppose, oppose this. And I just warn those people that try and make decisions like this, look back to what happened to governments that tried to do this before. I think it was a farce. It was done very rapidly and it was a faster way it was put to people to vote on. I think they put through some proposals that went over people's properties that would get them up in arms so they would vote for the one that went down their corridor that didn't go over their properties because, and, and that was a little bit of a trick, so if your house is going to get bulldozed you'll say, oh no, I'll put it down that, that one where there's no houses. More than half a century ago, most people in Ramati, Paraparomu and Waikanae lived in the beach areas. The current State Highway 1 was where it is now, so moving the highway closer to where people lived seemed a good idea. It would provide a second bridge across the river. People could get on and off it at ease. It would connect rather than sever and promote growth and prosperity. So building a number one state highway across land just two or three metres above sea, near a river mouth prone to flooding and storm surges, peat slumping and liquefaction wasn't an issue back then. But nothing happened. In the early 1960s, the Waikanae Bridge was rebuilt on State Highway 1. In 1969, Coastlands was completed and Waikanae Village, inland and apart from the beach settlement, continued to develop too, hugging State Highway 1. So the physical shape of Central Kapiti changed to the point that Council banned new driveways on and off the highway and talked to government about ways to improve State Highway 1 so that cars and trucks could get through safely without having to slow down too much or stop because of traffic lights. They discussed solutions like an underpass at Waikanae Village, an overpass near Coastlands, and using slip roads to safely cater for existing highway properties. And, best of all, for locals, but also for road users travelling through the central part of Kapiti, was the plan to use the Western Link Corridor for a local connecting road, that is, the Western Link Road, which would take a quarter of peak traffic off the highway and make life better for Kapiti. And the spending needed to remove bottlenecks on State Highway 1 would be progressive and economically managed. There was a lot of debate, adjustments to the plan and stumbles along the way. It was a hard road for the council and it tried the patience of the community, but in the end we got there. And in 2009, government were going to pay for 90% of the Western Link Road. Nathan Guy had been promoting it in his 2008 election campaign and the deals were being signed. In June 2009, the government freezes the funding for the Western Link Road and in August 2009, Stephen Joyce visits the mayor and councillors and tells them to forget the Western Link Road when he announces his roads of national significance. So what went wrong? Well, basically, nothing went wrong with the Western Link proposal. Uh, we as a district council, after some 30 years of community discussion, were ready to go. We were six months off putting the bulldozers into what would have essentially been a, an excellent two-laned 
highway going down through uh, the essence of Rao Mati and Paraparumu and Waikanae, um, affording us huge opportunity to have a cycleway, walkway, bridleway connections, um, safe for our children and our older folks. Uh, we didn't anticipate central government uh, coming into the discussion and uh, wanting to build a road of national significance. Um, and the rest is history, as they say, basically, but we had done our homework extremely thoroughly, and, um, uh, but we lost the debate. And at the end of the day, uh, it's, this is a central government directive, and we need to now work with central government as best as we can to get the best result for these communities. But at the end of the day, I have not seen any community yet on these matters uh, as, an, as an experienced environment court commissioner win an argument against a central government, um, very powerful central government um, decision. And so to that end, um, I think we have made the right decision. I think we're here to do the business. When we're here to try um, uh, and get a good result and not spend millions of dollars arguing a point that we would lose on. This is the, at the top of the priority list for the roads of national significance. There are eight in New Zealand that are being proposed. It's true that parts of the roads from Wellington to Levin do get badly congested. Here's a government estimate of the morning congestion, the red bits, from Kapiti to Wellington for 2016. Mackay's to Paka is from just north of Pakakariki to four and a half kilometres north of Waikanae village. But here's the projected and actual growth figures for State Highway 1 traffic between Paraparaumu and Waikanae for the past few years. Growth? What growth? Absolutely not the case. So the dishonesty around the consultation and that dishonesty that was fuelled by people that live in our community who, run, who ran a uh, campaign to perpetuate the dishonesty or the myth that this would be an advantage to our local community yeah, that, that makes me very angry. And then, the cho and then to choose a route and pretend that it had been supported by a majority is just... Well, it would be funny if it, if it wasn't such a tragedy. Mm. So, yes, right from the beginning, when Stephen Joyce came to council and announced that the road was going to be built, he was challenged by some of us, and we won... One thing we challenged him about was, where's the money going to come from? Where's, uh, of course, it will, the cost will escalate from $12 billion and the, uh, for the whole road of national significance. And he said, money's not a problem. Well, this government's cutting things left, right and centre. Now, money is a huge problem.